Welcome, I'm Larry Handy, and this is some of my collection of Philadelphia brewery advertising. In 1896, the United States Brewers Association held its annual convention in Philadelphia. Brewers from all over the country attended. Philadelphia was just past the height of number of breweries, but still had about 60 that were in business in 1896. The souvenir book from the convention had photographs of 57 out of the 60, and that's what our exhibit is based on. Prior to Prohibition, Bergner and Engel Brewing Company was the largest brewery in the city. They never reopened after Prohibition, because they fought the law and the law won. They tried to resist uh, prohibition and the feds made an example of them. John F. Betts was another of the largest breweries in the city prior to prohibition. Uh, they were located at 5th and Callow Hill Streets where the Vine Street Expressway goes through right now. They were originally an ale and porter brewery, but added lager beer to their uh, repertoire. Uh, John F. Betts was an investor in several other breweries, uh, including in New York City, Jersey City, New Jersey, and other breweries in Philadelphia. Many beer drinkers think that IPAs, India Pale Ales, are a new creation because of the dominance of late lager beers after Prohibition and into the 50s, 60s, and 70s, ale kind of went away in most of the country. But before Prohibition, many breweries made strong ales like India Pale Ale. For instance, the Robert Smith Ale Brewing Company, which was located at 38th and Girard in Philadelphia, traces its roots back to an ale brewery founded in 1774. Now, Robert Smith did not come into the brewing business until the mid-1800s, yet they claim uh, status as uh, one of the oldest breweries in the country um, because of their colonial roots. Um, Robert Smith was bought by C. Schmidt and Sons in the 1880s, and the name of their company was actually the Robert Smith India Pale Ale Brewing Company until the takeover by Schmidt's, at which point it was shortened to Ale Brewing Company. Their Tiger Head Ale brand was one of the longest running brands in uh, the history of beer in this country. Um, it was trademarked in the 1870s and was continued until Schmitz went out of business in 1987. Peter Shem and Son was a mid-sized brewer in Philadelphia in 1896. They were located at 25th and Poplar in the Fairmount section. Peter Shem himself was an interesting character. He was an art collector and there's uh, a book available with all photographs of all of the paintings from his collection. In his old age, he was going blind and had many other physical uh, disabilities and committed suicide by jumping into Niagara River just above Niagara Falls. His brewery was also sold to C. Schmidt and Sons but was not reopened after Prohibition. Gottlieb Manns, M-A-N-Z, founded a brewery in his name in 1864, uh, which eventually became the Philadelphia Brewing Company. As Philadelphia Brewing Company, they continued the Manns brand of beer, advertising it as a Manns brew. They also made Philadelphia Old Stock and a variety of ales uh, and other beers. This view of Philadelphia Brewing Company at 6th and Clearfield Streets surfaced in 2020 during a building remodel and is the only complete view of the brewery known. John Hohenado Brewery was located somewhat remote from the majority of the other brewery clusters in the city at Conrad Street and Indian Queen Lane 
in East Falls. In 1896, they were barely craft brewery size, only producing 2,800 barrels, but they grew into uh, Prohibition and reopened after Prohibition at a substantially increased volume. Christian Muir Schoen was the largest and the longest lived of many uh, white spear breweries that dotted the city. It's believed they brewed the Berliner style white spear, very sour but kind of a shortcut beer uh, that did not need to be boiled. So it was a much quicker process. So before Prohibition, C. Schmidt and Sons was in the top 10 of the largest breweries in Philadelphia. They stayed open during Prohibition by making non-alcoholic beer and other beverages. After Prohibition ended in 1933, they had an aggressive building campaign and eventually became the largest brewery in Philadelphia and the longest lived, lasting until 1987. Needless to say, the 13 years of Prohibition were very difficult on the brewing industry. So we went from about 60 breweries in Philadelphia in 1896. That number had declined slightly by 1920 when Prohibition kicked in. Following Prohibition, 16 breweries reopened with one newcomer, Grunwald, which was a new brewery uh, had, that had not been in business before Prohibition. Of the 16, three of them changed hands and operated under different names before closing. So Philadelphia is known for its neighborhood called Brewery Town, which was a nine or 10 block concentration of breweries in one section of the city, surrounded by a predominantly German speaking neighborhood and many allied industries like barrel making, for example. But there were several other neighborhoods in the city with a concentration of breweries, just not quite as compact as Brewery Town. There were quite a few scattered across the city with concentrations in Northern Liberties and North Philadelphia. This exhibit displays what is just a small part of a large collection of Philadelphia brewery advertising. Philadelphia Bruseum is incorporated in Pennsylvania as a nonprofit tax exempt entity, and we are currently in search of a brewery partner or real estate partner for a location to uh, display the collection in a venue where local beer can be enjoyed.